Welcome, everybody, to our morning show, our morning daily podcast, Prayer Revolution. I'm Doyle Grungadas here with my good friend and executive director of the Bhakti Center, Veera Bajaramdas, also known as Veera. Veera means warrior. For everybody who doesn't know, Veera means warrior. And so he is our frontline captain of the Prayer Revolution, and uh, he leads us every morning in a daily prayer. Um, and the idea is for us, in the midst of whatever uh, chaos or circumstances we may be going through, whether they be challenging or whether they be uplifting and positive, to pause and remember. Normally, you know, there's the, that, that, that famous saying, there's no atheist in the foxhole, that when things get rough, we get down on our knees and we pray. But that's not the mood of prayer we're looking to cultivate, where it's like when there's challenge and there's something I need or something I want. But even when things are going great, to recognize like, oh my gosh, you know, um, I just um, I just listened to the last part of the Joe Rogan podcast with Raghunath that took place like a couple months ago, you know, uh, BC before coronavirus, um, and uh, and uh, you know they were talking about the whole idea of humility and recognizing that even when I'm doing successful, like I have to fully peel back and recognize, you know, this this isn't me. I'm, I've been given a gift, I've been given a gift of the opportunity. I'm sort of a participant in my own life and my own uh, accomplishments and so whether it's good bad or ugly we can recognize that uh, we're not alone through it and we can pray for guidance pray for connection pray for leadership pray for strength pray for courage awareness <laughs> vulnerability all that good stuff and that's what we're here to talk about so um what do you got for us this morning beer so grateful to be with you bro so grateful to be with everybody online tuning in for uh for yeah for this this amazing opportunity that we all give ourselves to pause and i'm just grateful and i have a prayer i want to share with you guys um that came from a, a conversation i had with uh radana swami yesterday and um just some some thoughts and some words from my heart from that Beautiful. conversation how many out there can just say, hey, I picked this up from a conversation I had with Radhanath Swami yesterday. Hey, we were just chatting and he just dropped a few gems of wisdom. And so uh, that's well, what we <clears throat> Doyle asked me to call him. And so uh, <laughs> Do Doyle is the commander in chief and I am his humble servant. And somehow or other, I picked up the phone, I called and uh, there was an answer. It was an answer. Oh. And so, so much like our much like our prayer and our practice today, um, we're we're recognizing that as I was sitting in meditation today, that the 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 connection that I want the most is somehow or other the one that I take for most granted as mm. well, and. Yeah. And, and the, the person that is closest to me, the person that has mm. been there for me the most in my life, when I look at just people in my life, that there's a tendency to somehow or other just to downplay how amazing that person and that relationship is. And so I was recognizing that in my relationship um, with Krishna, with, with my higher power today. And, and, um, and also just, you know, yeah, really just recognizing that that connection's available all the time. And somehow or other, it's like, man, it's at the top of my speed dial. But like, I don't need, why don't I click it? You know, why don't I click it more often? You know, I was talking about telling you guys yesterday, I was talking to my mom and like, it's, it was such a meaningful and rich conversation with her. I was like, oh, why don't I call my mom more regularly? You know, so it's just that there's this, this, you know, this human conditioning to somehow or other to, to just downplay gratitude, downplay what's really truly most meaningful to us and kind of push it to the back burner. So we are bringing to the front burner and cranking it up a few notches, this, uh, this relationship that's available to us through the power of prayer, relationship with the higher power. And those of us that are familiar with prayer, you know, we've been doing this uh, day after day, almost a month now. And those of you guys that haven't prayed with us and haven't come into this space with us before, Find a comfortable seat or just pause and stand wherever you are, mm. just for a couple minutes. Close your eyes and start to connect to your breath. And soften your body so that you are, it's like you're, you're preparing to receive an embrace from somebody that is a trusted, loving friend. In this mood of, of receiving that we're going to, call in grace into our life. We're gonna call in our higher power. 
I'm going to call in this relationship to feel this closeness and this intimacy in these moments. My dear Lord, the greatest illusion is that we think we're the controllers. And it goes so deep and it's so subtle on so many levels. I think that I can control the weather. I think I can control the outcomes of work. I think I can control my health. I think I can control environments. I think I can control the world's outlook, what other people think of me. There's so many things that I think that I control, that I control even what's going to happen tomorrow or what's going to unfold in the rest of the day. This amazing illusion just sweeps through me constantly in my life, putting me in such a precarious situation, putting me into to such a rush of passion and fear and frustration and depression when things don't go my way, and sadness and anger, confusion, when things aren't unfolding the way I think they should. Please help me to have the courage. Please help my heart to open and my consciousness to open to in some way to find gratitude in what is. To recognize that life is unfolding, that I am, I am part of a great drama. I am part of a great, incredible unfoldment of life. I'm just a part of that. And that your hand in some way is navigating, is moving all the pieces. There's so many difficulties and challenges that we may see in the world, we may face. But through those, help me to stay connected to you. Help me to look at those opportunities and say, how can I serve? How can I come closer to you? And in the beauty and the splendor and the joys of life, let me ask that same question. How can I be an instrument of your love and of your grace? How can I feel that closeness with you? No matter what is taking place, know that I'm not the controller. I do not control destiny. I do not control the currents of the river of life. But that in stepping back and knowing that you are with me, and knowing that there is a bigger picture behind everything that's taking place, there's meaning, there's purpose behind it. That in that state of consciousness, I can see there's an opportunity to serve. There's an opportunity to express love, no matter what is taking place in my life. And that in, in that expression of love toward you, in that expression of love toward all those people that may be coming before me in my life, that's the happiness, that's the fulfillment of the soul that I'm seeking in my life. Please help us to see that today. Please help us to bring that into our life. And whatever the distractions are that take us this way and that way, please help us to remember that you being in the center of our consciousness, you being in the center of our desires, that's the happiness, that's the connection that we're truly seeking. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare. Thank you so much, Veer. Beautiful Thank word, you. beautiful heart. Um, very sweet. Thank you. How Thank you, DJ. How are you doing on this morning? What's on your heart that inspired you for those words? Uh, what's on my heart that inspired me for those words? Well, I mean, I, I mean, I've brought this up, you know, before, but and I think it's something that we'll bring up again and again in in our conversations. Um, though it's just so current, right? It's like we could literally have the conversation on repeat, mm. and it's it's gonna hit the heart and it's gonna hit the soul because it's mm. matters of the soul. You know, it's mm. it keeps increasing and expanding. The same prayer you know, with sincerity, with an eagerness, the same prayer becomes richer and richer and richer and richer every mm. time we recite it. You know, when we're, when we're calling out with that eagerness to connect, when we're calling out with that mm. sincerity, 
it's powerful. It's transformative. And so, mm-hmm. you know, we've, uh, yeah. What, what inspired me to share it was, um, well, you know, I, I feel that the more that I place my spiritual teacher, Radna Swami, kind of in the center of my consciousness, mm. the more that I place, you know, um, the experiences that we've had, the teachings that he shared with me, the guidance that he's given me, the, the love and the exchanges that we've had throughout my life, um, I feel a closeness with the divine. You know, I feel this intimacy mm. and this closeness with the divine. I feel that in some way that, 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 you know, him and myself, and I know it's way expanded beyond that, but just in my mm. personal reflections, that through him, that my life has such deep meaning through him, through his service to his teacher, his attempt to serve, serve God, you know, Mm. that, that my life carries so much meaning, you know? And, Mm. and so, you know, with the prayer specifically, yeah, like I want to see, you know, more and more, I listen to his lectures every day. And like, I love just like, I, I know so many of the prayers that just come from my heart. You know, if I close my eyes and I pray, I know they come from the exchanges Mm. I've had with them. I know they come from my connection with him, you know, and I know they come from a connection, you know, that, that he, he made available to me in such a powerful way in my life with a higher power with Krishna. Mm. And so feeling that, and, and then, uh, and then also just feeling the, as I was chanting today, I mean, I just smile at it more and more. I used to, I used to kind of express a little more frustration with myself when I would meditate and be like, Whoa, you know, like got like one mantra out of the last, like, you know, 45 minutes there, buddy, you know, (laughs) while you were planning, you know, the next world takeover, you know, whatever, you know, you're planning the next version of the Bhakti Center and I really got that down, but you know, missed your connection with God. Um, You know, just kind of recognizing how, how, like, you know, like that we we talked about being a cheap date or we talked about, you know, like just how, um, how the mind can just be so fickle, you know, Mm. that, that I just, I notice that, you know, I, I recognize that. And, and, and so I smile at it. I used to be a little, get a little more frustrated with myself. And I just kind of smile and just like, man, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're being a joker right now, you know? And, and uh, it's like, what do you really want, Vera? Mm. Like, what do you really want, man? You know, like you're mm. conditioned, you know, you're, you're conditioned in your life. And, you know, you think that there's certain things that are going to bring you happiness and fulfillment, but what do you really want? in your life Mm. and every time i ask myself that question i'm like man i'm sitting with him right now i'm sitting with you right now my lord like you're all i want and and yet it's like i'm Mm. so easily distracted and so easily diverted and so and so that that eagerness is uh you know it's just that that calling that sincerity and that eagerness is um is Mm. what you know is what's in my heart right now it's like yeah, I want to give my heart more fully. I want to give mm. my heart more fully. And, and, and I know that I'm going to get distracted and I'm going to forget. And uh, that's why I have you guys. You, help yeah. me re- you guys help me remember. And, uh, and something that's so beautiful, it's kind of like, it's, it's like this feeling of, um, it's, it's never going to be perfect you know, and, and that's like, it's totally relieving, right? It's not, I'm never going to have a perfect meditation. I'm never going to, mm. you know, be in this perfect state, you know, of consciousness. I'm not expecting that. I'm not expecting that. I'm just going to remember the divine in every moment of my life for the rest of my existence. Maybe one day that'll come, but that'll come when it comes, you know? And, and uh, until then, just like, yeah, that Im- imperfectly perfect, you know, to smile into that, to remember that and to, to just, yeah, just know we, that I'm in a process and that we're all in a process together and that it's, it's providing opportunities mm. to remember more and more rather than forget more and more. So, yeah. so that's, uh, you, you guys don't give out awards at the end of each morning program who had the best meditation practice. Actually, we who just, uh, we, 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 we stopped doing that after COVID. Um, we stopped doing it after COVID. It was getting in the way. You guys, <laughs> you guys don't line up and there's like, there's not like a team of, of, of priest judges. And today's yeah. most focused meditation award, go- second place meditation award goes to no, fear. No, we, oh, man. Let's go for yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's um, I, 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 I love, I love the sentiment, and I was, I was, I was reflecting also. Somebody wrote on the chat board how all of this, all of this COVID stuff is really bringing to light how little control any of us have over day to day life, and I think that 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 distraction during a prayer or meditation practice, it's us holding on to that sense of control. Mm. You know, it's that I am actually not trusting that this is going to work out unless I fret over it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Unless Mm -hmm. I fret over what's happening with work, family, this conversation. It's like like the idea of resentment. Normally resentment is considered like um, a negative emotion of anger. Like I have resentment towards that person. It means an an ill feeling. But somebody once explained to me the the actual meaning of the word, like resentment literally means re-sentiment. means to to sentiment, like a feeling, to re-feel something over and over again. So if I'm just, if I'm replaying a conversation in my mind over and over again, whether it's a negative argument or just something that happened, I'm living in resentment. I'm continuously hashing something out. And it's like, why am I hashing that out? Either I, either I need to go back and clear something out or I need to actually let it go because I'm just like, I'm attached to this, like fix to this fixation. You know what I mean? It's like my dog. It's like he can be playing with something and so fixated on it. But once you present something new, it's like, oh, I'll play with that now. You know what I mean? Mm. And so it's kind of like we don't realize that the fixations on our mind aren't that important all the time. And if we just shift that focus, we can fully let go of what we're so fixated on. So sometimes you need to go back and hash it out and clear something out because Mm. there's not closure. And sometimes there will never be closure with certain things. And we just have to recognize I'm just chewing on this bone of the past that I need to let go of. Otherwise I'm, I'm literally living in resentment because I, and then the consequence of that is that I'm not in the current present moment. Mm-hmm. And if there's something that I'm worried or stressed about, like, Oh, I gotta, fr- I gotta think about it. I gotta worry about it. It's I'm in that, 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 that ultra self-reliance mode of not trusting that, that there's somebody else that I can turn this over to. And I, I, I remember when, um, and I've shared, I've shared a couple of times, there was some, so, several years of my life where I spent in um, um, 12-step programs, not for substance abuse, but for Al-Anon or ACUA, people who grew up or were involved in alcoholic families and, and the, the relationship, the, 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 the dysfunctional relationship patterns that that can create in people. And so, but I remember I went there and I'd spent several years, a decade of my life living as a monk and I believed in God. And the first three steps are, you know, to admit you're powerless and to believe that you can get help and that a higher power is there for you. And I was like, I got these first three steps. Like, just get me to the real stuff. Like, fast forward me to steps four, five, and six, whatever they are, you know? And so I was like playing along, like, okay, sure, I'll go. You know what I mean? And it, it was like, it, it, was, it was my pride, actually. It was, it was my resistance and my judgment and my pride. And then I remember the first step was to admit that you're powerless over such and such. Mm-hmm. And especially in... um um, in, in, in relationship programs, it's like, it's, it's, I'm, I'm powerless over the circumstances that came into my life. I'm powerless over the way other people treat me. I'm powerless over the parents that I had, like whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, uh, the, the sponsor that I had at the time, he said, I just want you, I just want you over the next week, make a list of all the things that you're powerless over mm-hmm. like every little thing, you know? And I just remember that list was getting pretty long, you know? First, you think of like big major things, like I'm powerless over, you know, the, the, the conflicts in the Middle East, you know, I'm powerless over that. And then you get down to the littlest thing, like the weather. I'm powerless over the amount of times I go to the bathroom in a day. If I've got to go to that, like if I had an urge to rush to the bathroom, I would get up and leave you all right now because there'd be nothing I could do about it. You know what I mean? And it's like the littlest little things, like how much we're really powerless. And it's like even my breath. Like I'm breathing at every moment and breath is there. You know what I mean? Our water is there. Like how, how dependent, like every single day I turn on a faucet and I I switch a knob and water comes out and it sustains my life. I did not create that pipe. I did not create that plumbing. I didn't do anything, but I'm so, so dependent on it. It's like, like my wife and I, we joke because our dog, he's such a character. And he gets so like, it doesn't get moved, but he gets so like, uh, he's like a little prince and we spoil him, you know, and he, he nips at us and he bites us and like, he's kind of controlling the house. And then like, he'll just like pass out and go to sleep in our lap, like, or, you know, like, so like, oh, you know, like this big, you know, 
uh, guy who thinks he's in control is just like taking a nap or he's waiting for us for food. Like he doesn't realize how dependent he is on us. Even though he doesn't listen to us, he doesn't realize how dependent he is on us for the affection that he wants, for a warm place to sleep, for his food. You know what I mean? He doesn't realize that. He doesn't realize that, but he is. You know what I mean? Parenting, and, DG, parenting. Yes. And we, these ultra self-reliant, pick yourself up by your bootstrap, rugged individualism. I can't, I wouldn't even survive a day without the breath that comes in. I wouldn't even survive a week without the water that comes out of my faucet. Mm. You know? Mm. And we're kind of experiencing that a little bit now. It's like you go to the store, there's no freaking broccoli on the shelf. Mm. The heck? You know, there's no, they're, they're literally, they're literally, it's not just a meme. It's true. There's no toilet paper on the shelves of the stores near my house. I went to the Bhakti Center yesterday to pick something up. I was tempted to steal two rolls of toilet paper, but I didn't just because I didn't want to embarrass myself <laughs> by having to admit it. But it's just like, you can like, ask, DG, you can ask. We got you. Bubba. I was going to, but I thought, you know what? No, it was my rug. It was my ultra self-reliance. I'm not going to depend on the Bhakti Center for toilet paper. I'm going to just wait for it to go on the shelf. And so um, it was like, yeah. And so I think that going back to that space, that healthy sense of, de- of recognition of my lack of control, mm-hmm. and that lack of control can be terrifying or it could be liberating, mm-hmm. depending on the relationship I have with the person who I think is in control. Mm-hmm. And wrapping it all the way back to your meditation practice, as you were saying, because I'm the same thing. It's like a total distraction constantly, but it's like, Oh, I'm not, I'm not sitting in that space of, this is my provider. Mm. This is my, uh, this is, I'm dependent upon this, this, my, this divine Lord. Let me cultivate that, like coming with a sense of rather than distracting and I'll, and I'll, and I'll shut up after this rather than me fretting and worrying about all the things that I'm stressing about during my meditation. Why don't I rewire my thinking and say, my dear Lord, this is why I'm praying to you right now. Mm. This is why I'm meditating with you right now. This is why I want that moment to moment connection with you right now because the world is going to SHIT. My life is, 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 is a muck with all of these worries rather than me stressing to figure it out. Let me bring that to you. Let me bring that to you again and again, every day, every moment, and just like surrender. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful, DJ. What was coming when you were sharing that was that, uh, is that yeah, if I recognize you know, all, all the ways that I'm dependent upon nature and I'm dependent upon other people and dependent upon a higher power, when I recognize that and when I really write that list down, yes. then it, it becomes you know, like our gratitude list. You know, it yeah, becomes our, like this. Our fear journal, our control journal. We have a lot of journals going on. Yeah. <laughs> Right. It becomes this immediate opportunity for us to recognize that, oh my gosh, like I've been given something, you know, mm. like I, I've actually yes. been given, I've been given something and, and that the more I can extend that gratitude, not just for, for the things that are, um, you know, maybe pleasurable, but also the, if I can continue to extend that gratitude, you know, it's like, okay, there's going to be stress. There's going to be pressure on my life. Mm. The way I process that though, is makes a world of difference, right? If, mm-hmm. if, I'm, if I'm stressed out right now and I'm, and I'm processing it as something's happening against me, then I'm gonna be in fear and I'm gonna be in fight, right? If I'm in stress and I'm experiencing, this is happening for me, you know? This is happening for my growth, for my transformation, then I respond and there's enthusiasm mm-hmm. and there's energy that I bring to it, this transformation that occurs with it. And so I think, you know, just to start with the breath and to start with, the vegetables mm. and the food and the friendship and the love and the lights turning on the water faucet working like to start with these things of oh wow i don't have power over these and man i'm so grateful that these exist in my life you know that give me sustenance that allow for me to live and then from there let me not stop let me not stop with mm. that the power of gratitude let me not stop it there you know Gratitude is God consciousness, you know, mm. and if I'm, if I'm bringing that gratitude into the stormy choppy seas and I'm bringing that gratitude into the challenges and the difficulties that I face mm. it becomes a catalyst for empowering transformation in our life. It becomes an opportunity for us again, right? Mm. No matter what the circumstance in our, is in our life, 
again to return to that God consciousness. And that's our whole exercise. That's our whole prayer revolution. It's our whole podcast. It's our whole life is to return to that consciousness again mm. and again and again and again. And I'm not seeking so, so much to change the things outside of, that I don't have control over, but I'm, I'm seeking to purify my consciousness so that my soul and my relationship with a higher power is shining through. That that's mm. becoming my experience. It's becoming my reality. And so that no matter what is taking place in my life, that there, there, there's, there's not a block. There's not a, mm. a, a locked door. That door is always open mm. for us, no matter what's taking place in our life, to actually experience what we're seeking, to experience mm. that love of the divine, experience that connection with ourselves spiritually. Mm. That's what we're looking for. And then everything else flourishes from there. And so... As yeah. you're sharing it, it's like, yeah, like, let me recognize what I don't have control over, you know, and let me be grateful for it and let that gratitude keep extending, let it keep extending. It's going to take exercise, it's going to take us flexing those muscles. But when we extend it into stress, when we extend it into difficulty, when we extend it into challenge, it opens doors that we didn't know were possible, mm. it opens doors to realities that we didn't know existed. And so, yeah. I think it's uh, it's just as you're sharing, you, you, yeah. Feel feel that energy. I feel the power of that gratitude and what's possible. Yeah. You know, with us encouraging each other to really step into it, no matter what's happening in our life. Yeah, gratitude is God consciousness. It's beautiful. It's it's mm -hmm. it's beautiful. I think that that's very much that 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 mood. I was I was looking at this this verse from the Bhagavad Gita. It's in the fourteenth chapter, fourteenth chapter, verse four. It's a famous verse where Krishna says. It should be understood that all species of life, O son of Kunti, are made possible by birth in this material nature, and that I am the seed-giving father. Mm. And in the commentary, Srila Prabhupada mentions, in this verse, it is clearly explained that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, is the original father of all living entities. The living entities are combinations of the material nature and the spiritual nature. Such living entities are seen not only on this planet, but on every planet, even on the highest where Brahma is situated. Everywhere there are living entities, within the earth there are living entities, even within water and within fire. All these appearances are due to the mother, material nature, and Krishna's seed-giving process. The purport is that the material world is impregnated with living entities who come out in various forms at the time of creation due to the, according to their past deeds. So everything is moving in the world. Everything is happening. But there's a, there's, there's a seed-giving father. There's, there's an overseer of director of like the whole kind of movement of how we're going through life and as you're as like that idea of like starting to see you've said that before started to see how life's happening for me not to me or being grateful for the seeing reversals in my life as opportunity for growth and transformation to connect that to a person to connect that to somebody who's providing these things in my life and when things are great i can be grateful and when things are challenging i that means that there's something i'm not getting like, which means that I don't understand why or how this is happening. I can turn to that connection and, uh, and, 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 um, and pray for that, that, uh, that revelation of consciousness. Yeah. Let's try it out. Let's, give let's try it, a it shot. out. Let's give it a shot. Who, Hey, what, a, shot. what do we got to lose? We're, we're not doing anything else. We're just sitting we're at home. Quarantine. We're, we're going to do a little quarantine. experiment. Guys. Try it out. Why not? You know, come on. No matter so, what's, no matter what's happening in life. Let's flex that. And, it, and it's, it's something that is, it's from our heart. We are actually, we're flexing our heart. We're flexing. bringing gratitude. We're bringing that. Help me to be grateful. If I'm not feeling grateful, help me to be grateful. If I don't feel like being grateful, and I don't feel like even asking to be grateful, help me to feel like praying to be grateful. Just going there, wherever we're at in that journey, to be able to come to that place where we're, we're starting to see the opportunity and we're starting to transform our consciousness to, to see the opportunity to serve, to see the opportunity to express love. And mm. uh, that's, that's going to pull us out. That's going to give us that connection, that fulfillment that we're all seeking. And uh, that's our experiment. We're all on it together. Yeah. Beautiful. There was a question. How do we think about free will in, in concert with the belief that God has a plan? That's a beautiful question. Rowdy, Yo Rowdy Girl Yoga, but we are out of time today. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to pause that question. We're going to pick it up maybe tomorrow. 
Um, Give a little we, shout out to Danielle Sound Cream Airstream, like, our, our dear friend Danielle Collier from Texas. Texas. Johnny V. Harrison was here a second ago. I don't know if she popped in and popped out, but she was here. She's someone that we got to get on the show as a guest soon. Um, love you, Johnny V, if you're still listening. Um, so today, please um, make your list of things that are not in your control. That's going to be a long list, I promise you. Um, and then what do I do with that list um, is, 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 is up to us individually. And gratitude is not just like a forcing, oh, I got to be gratitude, oh, but it's, it's, it's a consciousness. Gratitude is a frame of mind where I am uh, restructuring how I view the things in my world and where they came from. Beautiful, did you? All right. That sounds I have good. A- yeah, it sounds good. Okay, well, and uh, and today, if you guys uh, if you guys want to tune in, Deanna and I are gonna we'll be on at ten a.m. for a conversation oh, around sweet. spiritual spiritual relationships and talking about boundaries and talking about how relationships can really be these amazing uh, protective fortresses in our life that protect love and what's truly most meaningful to us. And um, and also, I'm gonna be going live with uh, my friend Miranda Kerr today at three p.m. And so Eastern time. So if you guys want to join in for a wellness experience to relax your mind, relax your body, and to connect a little bit more deeply with yourself, you can tune on. I'll, I'll be going live at three o'clock today. As well. How do they find the three o'clock one? I'll be going live on, on her Instagram. So if you just, if, if you're on my Instagram page, you'll see me go live. Okay. So go to, go to Vera's Instagram page. Yeah. You got to yeah. go to Vera's Instagram. And today relationships, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock on Bhakti Center IG. Love you guys all so much. Please, please take care. Uh, Chandler, I will repost this. Yes. And uh, you take care, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a beautiful day, guys. Love you, bro. See you guys. Oh, man, Julie, that smile, girl. That smile. AJ, that laugh, man. Come on. I love it. I love it. Great to see you guys. Have a beautiful day. Constantine, I guess, have a beautiful day. Got it from my mom. I got, got it from my mama. I love it. Beer, we got to get, get your, what, you, you're going to invite your mama to the show. When's she, when's she going to be our guest? You say something, DG? When's your mom going to be our next guest? I know. I don't, I, I, we got to figure out how to get her on. I don't know how you, how we would even do it. Can you do a three-way Insta live? I don't think so. No, I've never seen a three-way Insta live. I think we have to wait till we're back in person and then we can, we can, you and I can be live together in, at the Bakke Center and then. Uh, All right, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We will figure it out. Okay. All right. Have a great, have a great talk at 10 and at three and then we're, we're meeting at 11. You got it, Bubba. See you there. Love you, man.